Hi there, folks. It's me, Michael Bach, your diversity dude. And no, CCDI has not uh, moved its offices to somewhere tropical. I'm on vacation, uh, but I was so moved by uh, recent actions in my home country that I felt like I had to put down my pina colada and record this video. Struggle is real. So, of course, I'm speaking about uh, the recent horrific murder of six of our Muslim brothers in Quebec City. I'm not going to comment on the situation south of the border because, uh, quite frankly, uh, that's a disaster that defies explanation. But it does say something when the president's press secretary uses the horrible hate crime against Muslims as a call for higher levels of uh, xenophobic protectionism that excludes Muslims. The alleged would-be murderer is a 27-year-old white Francophone. Um, from what I can tell, there's nothing really remarkable about him, except for one thing. He's a 27-year-old white man. He's a 27-year-old disenfranchised white man who felt justified in taking the lives of six innocent Muslims simply because of their faith. He's a 27-year-old white man who feels threatened by diversity. Alexandre Bissonnette has just become the standard bearer for the Trumpification of North America. He represents something that we as a country cannot ignore. He's young, he's angry, and he feels like the world is changing and leaving him on the sidelines. Monsieur Bissonnette is not unique. He's not alone. He's an indication of something that I have seen coming since I started doing this work. As we put more and more focus on the advancement of women, the inclusion of people from different racial and ethnic backgrounds, accessibility for people with disabilities, reconciliation with our indigenous peoples, as gender diverse people are finally being recognized as equal and distinct under the law, and as we as a country put more and more focus on immigration, who's left out? Alexandre Bissonnette is left out. Swamps, or straight, white, able-bodied Christian men, are left out. The C in that acronym is silent. Now is not the time to engage in a debate about privilege and how the Alexandre Bissonnettes of the world are dripping in it, because that isn't going to help. He doesn't understand privilege. What he understands is that he is under attack. And he felt the attack was so significant that he only had one option, to kill. So my message is to all my diversity and inclusion champions and professionals out there, don't underestimate the power of Alexandre Bissonnette. Remember his name and make sure that your diversity and inclusion strategies and programs take him into consideration. We need to make sure that he's at the table. We need to make sure his voice is heard, and we need to make sure he's included. Otherwise, we'll be feeding into his belief that diversity and inclusion is in itself about everyone but the straight, white, able-bodied Christian man. Right now, we as a country need to collectively mourn the loss of these six innocent victims and rally behind their friends and family to remind the world that Canada is not a country of hate. Love must win. Now I'm back to my piña and 30 degree weather. Stay safe.